Perhaps no state has more pride in their flag than we do right here in the MD. And no one has done more to promote the mighty colors of Maryland than our next guest, Ali Van Paris, founder of Route One Apparel. Ali, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it is great to have you on the show. A, a lot of people don't know your story, but it is an amazing one, and it goes right back to the college days. Yes, it does. So. Um, I was working at a bar on campus at University of Maryland and it was forced to shut down. So I was out of work and, but I always had a knack for design and this bar had a huge following. So my first design, the bar was called Thirsty Turtle. It was called Turtle Survivor. Um, I thought I could sell 30. Uh, I posted about it on my social media and it ended up getting 600 orders in under two weeks. Actually the first day that I launched my website, Route One Apparel, um, just to facilitate the ordering process. I had $12,000 in sales overnight. Amazing, and we, we see that it was <laughs> a lot of work uh, and a lot of product in the early days, a lot to manage there. We see you trying to dig out on, it looks like a pretty big order there. But as we kind of move forward in time, we know that Route 1 has become this huge success through these past years. Talk about that progression. Yeah, so um, I was a junior when I started my company and then um, by my senior year, I was a finance major. My parents wanted me to do the finance route, and I said, just give me three months. So you saw some pictures of me um, taking over my parents' house. They were really good sports about <laughs> it. Um, I, my company grew tremendously. You know, my senior year, I was in the Cupid's Cup competition. Um, it's hosted by Kevin Plank, and I got top five. I was supposed to win $15,000 seed funding if I won, but I didn't, unfortunately. So I was in a really big predicament, as many college students are at that age. You know, what route to take? Should I take a corporate route or should I start my own thing? I decided to start my own thing, and our first custom product at that point was a Maryland flag bikini, which I ended up pre-selling 1,000 before they came in stock. So that catapulted my business to the next level, and then I, over the years I've just learned how to make new things. and. Yeah. We see that Maryland bikini on, on the beaches of our state all over the place now. So what, tell me about this. What is it about our flag for you? What inspires you so much? I, back in the day, you know, when I was a junior, um, I started putting flag elements in, on things. And back then, I actually didn't see the flag on many things. But I saw the flag as a pattern, and I thought, this is so cool and so unique. I mean, you can only name off the top of your head maybe five to ten flags across the nation that are memorable. And I definitely see this as a top five. And so people were freaking out when I would put elements of the flag and things. And, you know, I've always listened to my customers over the years. I'm very in touch with people on social media. Right now we have over 125,000 people from Maryland that follow us online. Um, so it, it's just evolved over the years. And we do more than the flag now. We have elements of um, like crab patterns, nautical patterns. I mean, we have licensing with Natty Bow and Old, and Old Bay soon. So, sure. yeah so many Maryland themes that you're able to incorporate in your merchandise and we're looking at some of it now. Any top favorites of yours through the years or currently? So many of my products have a story because not only am I learning how to make things for the first time, um, but there's so many challenges in making new product. But if I had to narrow it down, um, I think it would be these shoes I'm wearing right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the first product I actually had to ship by sea and that sounds really weird and boring, but that in and of itself was a challenge because I was actually operating out of my parents' house at the time, uh -huh. and they needed a little loading dock. And uh, it was, imagine a thousand shoes shipping in a you, container fitting into a garage. I uh, mean... There's just the shoe boxes alone. <laughs> we know the space they can take. You know, I, I think your story is one that really inspires maybe a lot of young people that think about going into business. Do you have any sort of top tips for aspiring Maryland entrepreneurs as we finish up? I think it's important to find your niche product and just really perfect it. But I also think it's also important to be totally in touch with your customers because if you're selling a product that no one really is interested in, then you're not going to do well. So I think listening to your customers, listening to their feedback, and then changing the way and the direction, not totally always just getting in your own head about what you think is right. It's, at least for my brand, it's a community brand. That's the way I like to put it. And all of this is a community effort. Yeah, it's uh, your passion and the market's passion, and we know in Maryland our colors are our passion. Ali, thank you so, much, so much for, for coming in me. today. Pleasure to have you here. We gotta Anytime. go check out some of that product <laughs> before you leave. Hey, uh, when we come back, we'll have much more, so stay with us here on Midday Maryland.